What's up? I'm so glad I'm here. So glad I'm here. So glad I'm here to share some stories. I'm so glad I'm here. Yes, I am. So glad I'm here. So glad I'm here to share some stories. Like the song says, I'm glad to be here in Istanbul <laughs> to share my stories and to hear yours. For as long as words have been spoken, and before words were even written down, there have been tellers of stories and listeners to hear. Can I have the lights up, please? I have to see who I'm talking to. Storytelling is different than theater. I have to see who I'm talking to. The storyteller is person to person, eye to eye, heart to heart. House lights up, please. Could I? In Africa, where my ancestors come from, the four most important traditions, besides family and community, are music. Get your hands ready. Come on, sign language. American sign language. Music. Mm -hmm. Dance. Put your thumb in. No three legs. Dance. Religion. And storytelling. And those four things are tools of a culture. In today's world, we might call them, or techno world, we might call them killer apps. <laughs> but I'd like to start with one of those tools, the gift of music and song. Because you know what they say. If you want to learn about another culture, listen to the stories and the songs. In Zimbabwe, they say, if you can walk, you can dance. If you can talk, you can sing. Yeah, we'll sing. Mm. <laughs> Repeat after me. Ham bone, ham bone, where you been? Round the world and back again. Oh, ham bone, ham bone, where's your wife? In the kitchen cooking rice. Oh, ham bone, ham bone, where's your daughter? Down at the lake, swimming in the water. Ham bone, ham bone, where's your son? Down at the lake, having fun. Ham bone, ham bone, where you been? Round the, a long, long, long time ago, when Africans were enslaved in America, we had to live in tiny little shacks with dirt floors, sometimes no windows. And the people who owned them lived in nice, fine houses with beautiful flower gardens, a screened-in porch where they could sit when it got hot. And when they had dinner on the table, the table was piled with food. And when they had a ham on the table, they would eat <coughs> every bit of that ham and take the ham bone and give it to guess who? The slaves. Now, the slaves weren't allowed to read or to write. But even though they didn't know how to read or write, that didn't mean they weren't smart. They looked at that ham bone, and they said the three most important words in African-American culture. They said, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> What can we do with this? You know what they did? Took that ham bone and dropped it in their beans to give their beans flavor. 
took the ham bone out and gave it to their neighbor, put it in their beans to give their beans flavor. Took the ham bone out and gave it to their neighbor, put it in their pot to give their beans flavor. That old ham bone went from shack to shack to shack to shack. And that's where that song comes from. Ham bone, ham bone, where you been? Round the world and back again. And that world was the only world they knew. But by passing that ham bone from shack to shack to shack, they created something, a community. It's the same with stories. When you passed and share our stories from person to person, place to place around this world, we are creating something, a larger community. A larger community. Story, story, where you been? Round the world and back again. All cultures have an oral tradition. From Europe we get once upon a time. From West Africa we get a story, a story. Let it come, let it go. From South Africa we get Kesu Kesu Kela. From East Africa we get Hadithi Hadithi, Hadithi Joe. From Somalia we get Shako Shako. Shake ma. <laughs> From Hawaii, we get aloha. Let's talk story. From Australia, we get from the Aboriginal people, we get stories from the dream time. From Haiti, we get click, crack, yes. <laughs> and from Turkey, we get, I don't know, yet. Because there are so many cultures in this one world, and so many stories, and so much I don't know. So much I still don't know. But I'm learning, because they say the world is a book, and if you never travel, you've only seen one page. But we can travel through stories. Every morning in Africa, a gazelle wakes up and he knows he has to run faster than the fastest lion or he will be eaten. Eh? But every morning in Africa, a lion wakes up and he knows he has to run faster than the slowest gazelle or he will starve. Eh? So you see, it doesn't even matter whether you are a lion or a gazelle. When the sun comes up, you've got to be running. Now travel with me to Nigeria and hear a story about one of the most famous deities in the Yoruba religion, a trickster god with a sense of humor who goes by many names. I like the name Papa Legba. Listen. Put your hands like this, friend, and sign language. Yes, American sign language, yes. There once were two. Oh, you got a little late. Come on, on time. I said there once were two. Yes. They were born on the same day. They were born in the same village. Ha <laughs> ha. They grew up together. They played together. They worked together, they did everything together. And you won't believe this. They married sisters from the same family and built their houses right across the road from each other. And every night they ate dinner at one of the other's house. It's what you call good friends. Well, one day, Papa Legba, just for a little fun, went walking down the road. And he was wearing this beautiful fila. Now a fila is a small hat or cap. And Papa Legba, he's walking down the road, because he liked to walk, eh? And he stopped 
right in front of the friends' houses. And there they were, out in the yard, working. And to get their attention, he said, Ahem. Ahem. And this friend, he looks up and said, Ah. And this friend looks up and said, Oh ho! And Papa Legba continued what he was doing, walking. Because he liked to walk, eh? Well, that night, the two friends, right, they were eating together because they always ate together, right? And this friend said, hey, my friend, <laughs> did you see that man today who was wearing that beautiful fila? He said, oh, yes, I saw him. <laughs> it was a beautiful fila. My favorite color, too, red. Oh, no, 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 my friend. <laughs> the fila, it was black. I know what I saw, my friend, with my own eye. <laughs> the fila was red. <laughs> my friend, you are mistaken. The fila was black. I know what I saw. You must be blind. The fila was red. Are you calling me a liar? If the shoe fits. <laughs> oh, they begin to argue. The fila was red. It was black. It was red. Huh. They began hitting each other. They knocked the door down, went into the road, rolling on the ground, red, black, red, black. And these were friends. Well, do I have to tell you what happened, huh? Huh? Both men were arrested for disturbing the peace. Now, I could just end the story there, right? Right? Yeah, but I won't. <laughs> there were the two friends in the courtroom. The courtroom was packed. The judge up front, from the back of the courtroom, in walks Papa Legba. He stands in back, and he just listens. Uh -huh. And he listens. Uh -huh. And he listens. And he listens. And Papa Legba said, <laughs> and the people said, why are you laughing? What is so funny? And Papa Legba said, <laughs> both men are wrong. And both men are right. And an old Old man, he said, what are you talking about? And Papa Legba said, <laughs> my fila is both red and black. <laughs> and the old man said, why do you cause trouble? <laughs> Me cause trouble? Oh, no, 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 my friend. <laughs> You cause the trouble because you're human beings. And when human beings, when you only see one side at a time, your side, you fight and you argue. And Papa Legba, he turned and he left. <laughs> so the next time you argue with your siblings, with your children, with your husband, let that little bit of a story come into your heart and help you like it does me. And remember, there are two sides, two sides, two sides, two. There are two sides, two sides, two sides, two. There are two sides, two sides, two sides, two. Every story. Oh, there are two sides, two sides, two sides, two. There are two sides, two sides, two sides, two. There are two sides, two sides, two sides, two. Every story. The mind is like a parachute. It only works when it's open. <laughs> huh? And stories, the stories we tell are like the ropes on that parachute. The more we share, the more ropes. The bigger the parachute, the higher we go, and the more we see.
using stories as a teaching tool is as old as mankind. A resource, teachers, the shortest way and most effective way to bring home a point. And one of my favorite storytellers, a little slave in Greece, Aesop, knew that. He knew it well. But he said, no one will listen. People laughed at him, made fun of him. And do you know why they laughed at him? Huh? Because they say, his head was long, his nose was flat, his skin was black, his lips were thick, had a hump on his back, his belly was large, his legs were bow. But what they didn't know, that little slave Aesop, he had a heart of gold and a head full of ideas and stories and lessons to teach. But he said, no one will listen. So I hide them in my stories. Listen to a tale told over 2,000 years ago. A long, 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 got to be on time. Come on. A long, long, long time ago, there lived a donkey. And one fine morning, there was that donkey walking down the road. Boom, sucka, lucka, lucka, boom, boom, clap. Boom, sucka, lucka, lucka, boom. Boom, sucka, lucka, lucka, boom, boom. Boom, sucka, lucka, lucka, boom. When the donkey, he sees a lion skin on the ground. The whole lion skin. The head, ew. The tail, ew. The claws, ew. And the donkey thought to himself, <laughs> if I put this lion skin over my body, I could go around scaring everybody, couldn't I? Couldn't I? The donkey picked up the lion's skin, put it over his body, <laughs> and headed down the road to see who he could scare. Boom, like a like a like a boom, boom. Boom, like a like a like a boom. Boom, like a like a like a boom, boom. And when the people saw a lion coming, they said, run, run, run for your lives. Don't sit that woman, run, a lion's coming. And the people ran this way, they ran that way, they went. They ran every way, and the donkey, he liked it. <laughs> and he went down the road to see who else he could scare. Boom, shaka, laka, laka, boom, boom. Boom, shaka, laka, laka, boom. And guess who came hopping along? A little rabbit. And when the rabbit saw the lion, he was so afraid, he couldn't even And the donkey said, I'm going to really scare him. But there was one thing wrong. That donkey had on the lion's skin so long, he actually thought he was a lion. And he said, I'm going to scare him with my mighty roar. He lifted his claws, threw back his head, in a deep breath he said, hee haw, hee haw, hee haw. <laughs> and when the rabbit <laughs> heard that, the rabbit said, you call that a roar? Come back, everybody. Don't run away. It's only the silly. Donkey! <laughs> but there stood the donkey, looking stupid. But it just goes to show you, sometimes it's just better to be your self and keep your big mouth shut. <laughs> my son Joey, my son Joey was adopted by me and my husband, 
when he was three and a half years old. And Joey is a mixture of two cultures. He's a mixture of the black culture and the white culture. But Joey just happens to look more white than black. And when he went to elementary school, things were fine. When he got to middle school, yeah. when he got to high school, I don't know why some kids are so mean. Do you know what they call my son, Joey? Hey, white boy. Hey, mayonnaise. Hey, I want to be. Joey said, no, man. I'm black. But they were calling him names. They were putting him down. They made Joey feel so bad inside. Guess what he did? Just like that donkey, Joey tried to become somebody else. Because you will do that when you don't know who you are. And Joey, he watched some of the black kids in my neighborhood who wore their pants low. <laughs> Joey wanted to be cool. He didn't want to be laughed at. So he wore his pants twice as low. <laughs> it looked like he had pooped in his pants. <laughs> Joey watched some of the black kids who had a cool walk. Joey wanted to be cool, didn't want to be put down. He tried to cool up his walk. And Joey watched some of the black kids in my neighborhood who had a cool talk. He wanted to be cool. He didn't want to be laughed at. So jo Joey tried to cool up his talk. He really did. Yo, what's up? Peace out. He was trying to be so black and so cool. Guess what? Got kicked out of school. But not just that school, four other schools. When Joey was going to school in Oakland, California, where I live in America, he was cool. And I shipped him north to Maine. He was cold. <laughs> Mr. Cool <laughs> was cold. <laughs> but he finally graduated from high school in Maine, where it was cold. And when he finished, he didn't just graduate. He graduated with honors. And guess where he went then? Down to San Diego, Southern California, where it's warm. <laughs> but Joey, when he was a little boy, he heard that cute little Aesop fable about the donkey and the lion skin. But now Joey understands the story. And he understands now that the only skin he needs is the skin he's in. Because you can't change it. And if people don't like it, too bad. It's better to be yourself. Better to be yourself. Don't end up like that donkey. It's better to be yourself. Before you say an ugly word, stop and count to 10. And then if you want to say that word, <laughs> stop and count again. Don't let your tongue be tied in the middle and loose from end to end. You got to think twice and then speak once, because donkeys can't count to 10. Hee haw, and donkeys can't count to 10. Uh, it's better to be yourself, better to be yourself. Don't end up like that donkey. It's better to be yourself. Yes. As a storyteller, I do a lot of traveling. That's the nature of this job. And one time I was traveling in middle America somewhere, and I had a school to do that morning. Two programs, a quick lunch break, and I had two programs at another school in the afternoon. Well, I finished my two programs. I drove to a nearby restaurant, walked in, said I was in a hurry. She said, don't worry, ma'am. We'll seat you right away. She brought me to a booth. I sat down, ordered my food. But while sitting there, I got warm, so I took off my coat, and I walked over to put it down on the opposite seat in my booth. As I went to put my coat down, I looked up in the booth in front of me, and I see an older white man sitting in the booth facing me. And his eyes are open, but they're gone, blank. 
and he looked very sad and very worried, like something was wrong. So I say to him, Penny, for your thoughts. And he kind of comes out of it, and he said, what did you say to me? I said, Penny, for your thoughts. And he said, uh. And when he did that, all the little prejudices we all have begin to bubble up. And I said to myself, mean old white man, how come he has to be so grumpy and so rude? I was just trying to be friendly, mean old white man. But as I sat there, I started thinking, what are you doing? Why did you have to say mean old white man? Why couldn't you just say mean old man? You don't know what's going on in that man's life or why he might be so worried or so upset. Chill out. So I did. And I always bring a book to read, looking for another story. So his food comes, then my food comes. So I'm sitting there reading and eating, reading and eating and reading and uh -huh. And he finishes first. And he gets up to leave. But to leave, he has to pass my booth. And when he gets to my booth, he stops. And I think, uh-oh. And he leans over and he said, what did you say to me? And I said, Penny, for your thoughts. He said, young lady, if you only knew, my wife died three weeks ago and I don't know what to do. I said, I knew something was wrong, so I thought maybe I should say something. He said, you sure got that right. You believe we were married 61 years? I said, what? You were married 61 years to the same woman? <laughs> and that made him smile. And then he got really close to my face and he said, you believe? I'm 90 years old. I said, you're 90 years old? Let me touch you. I want to live to be that old. I said, you're 90 years old? Married to the same woman 61 years? I said, you are blessed. You don't have to worry about a thing. Everything is going to be all right. And he tapped me on my shoulder like this. He said, thank you, young lady. Thank you. Now, that old man didn't have to stop and say anything to me, did he? I didn't have to say anything to him, but I did, didn't I? Two individuals coming together in that one little moment of life. I mean, two different cultures, two generations, really, coming together in that one little moment of life. But you know what they say, right? The most important person in this world is the one you're with right now. Lean on me when you're not strong. I'll be your friend. I'll help you carry on. For it won't be long when I'm going to need somebody to lean on. Come on. Just call on me, brother, when you need a hand. Because we all need somebody to lean on. I just might have a problem that you'd understand because we all need somebody to lean on so call me call me or skype me <laughs>
De Shakur Adedem. Thank you for listening. <laughs>